As the country and world prepares to say our final goodbye to Queen Elizabeth the Great, with her state funeral likely to become one of the most viewed events ever tomorrow morning, it's been another unprecedented weekend in modern British history. The Queen's children and grandchildren put family feuds to one side for two breathtaking vigils around Her Late Majesty. Meanwhile, King Charles and Prince William have done all they can to assure us that the post-Elizabethan era of the monarchy will be one where the royals are regularly up close and personal with their subjects. But overshadowing all of that, the Elizabeth line itself. The queue to end all queues snaking around many of the great sites of London as a special equalising force, bringing us together in quite remarkable ways. So here's to another unforgettable few days. I keep thinking about the what, what really the last 10 days means for a previously divided Britain. The unified spirit in which we've come together to say goodbye to our greatest ever monarch has been awe-inspiring. Political divides have been largely absent from this period of mourning, and I think we should be highly suspicious, highly suspicious of those individuals and groups who want to use this time to sow division. Like James O'Brien, the toxic LBC hard left presenter who has claimed the Q is some sort of establishment plot to concoct mass grief for the late Queen. Look. Somebody somewhere has very deliberately conceived a plan to have hundreds of thousands of people snaking through London visibly, publicly and performatively queuing to pay their respects to the late Queen. Why have they done it like this? How? I don't want to say sinister. So I won't. It, the more I think about the very deliberateness of this, the more manipulated I feel. Or the BBC and Sly News, who think it's appropriate to use the Queen's death to push the cause of Scottish independence, and indeed, in the case of the latter, a revolution. King returned today to a Scotland that has been diverging from the rest of the UK politically for 40 years. Support for independence is still below 50%, but not by much, and it's much higher amongst the young. Though the King has chosen to begin his reign with visits to Edinburgh, Belfast and Cardiff is telling, it suggests that the future of the Union is at the heart of his concerns. The early decades of his late mother's reign were characterised by the long, slow contraction of British imperial power around the world. He will be alert to the possibility that his own reign could come to be defined by the continuation of that process here and the eventual dissolution of the United Kingdom itself. It's without doubt that the Queen was part of the glue that held the nations of the United Kingdom together. But undoubtedly people who will be unsettled by the passing of the Queen will be wondering what kind of political impact it's going to have as we ask ourselves questions about what kind of United Kingdom we are now and whether in fact we should remain united. As, as Lord Bottom, we were talking to him, was, was referring to this and saying how, you know, some people will say, well, you know, 
how come we've got a royal family? It's not very democratic. It, the, the fact of the matter is, it is democratic, you know, until we have a revolution. It's almost, it's democratic in, in, in the sense that the British public is laissez-faire about changing it. But while they've tried, supported by their grief-shaming, Britain-hating left-wing trolls that dominate that cesspit that is Twitter, the British public has been unified in our desire to celebrate the life of the late Queen Elizabeth II. In fact, a new poll released today shows support for Scottish independence has already plummeted by seven points since the death of the late Queen. We feel no shame about her magical reign, no matter how hard the New York Times and CNN might try, because we know she has been a positive force for good in this country, the Commonwealth and the world. And tomorrow the nation will stop to bid her a respectful final goodbye. It's the least we can do.